What's up, fellas? So picture this. You're working out hard. You're following an optimal split. You're sleeping eight hours a night. You're eating enough. And your back just isn't growing. You're showing up, but you're not getting the results that you're looking for. Now, I promise you, the universe doesn't hate you. And you're more than likely on the right track. It's just a small mistake in execution that you're making that is preventing you from getting a barn yard door back. Now, there's four common mistakes that I have made myself. We all have made or will make these mistakes. I want to talk about them today so that you fellas can get that jacked and stacked back that you're looking for. Now, as always, before we get started, I'm keen to hear from you guys. What types of difficulties are you having with your back training right now? What have you tried? It's worked. What hasn't worked? Tap in down below in the comments and let's just see where our common ground is. Now, you guys already know, we have to start off the video with generating some discussion with a hot take. Today's hot take relating to the worst training mistakes you can make for your back is, in my opinion, this is my hot take, so you guys give me your input. I think that the biggest mistake one could make when trying to get a bigger back is not basing their program off of time-tested compound motions and majoring in the minors. Now, by that I mean, you can log on to Instagram and in two seconds, you will be bombarded with infographics and reels and shorts, TikToks, whatever the case may be, that tell you that a barbell row, a pull up, a stiff leg deadlift, good morning, these time tested exercises to holistically develop your back are not optimal. And then they'll cite these biomechanics that they apply to these motions that are often done with cables and that are light and easy and intuitive for beginners to get into because they're all of those things, they're not difficult. They use those exercises as a means to say, don't do those motions, do mine, buy my ebook. The biomechanics don't change. We don't suddenly have a different human body just because we're using a different exercise. You have to use these bigger motions and then just apply the biomechanics to them as well. So that being said, I wanna take you guys to the gym with me. We're gonna go through some quick tutorials to allow you to know how to apply biomechanics to barbell rows, pull downs, pull ups, your favorite exercises, my favorite exercises as well. Let's go. I hope that was a light bulb moment for a lot of you guys. I know it was for me when I figured out I could just use my motions that I had been doing my entire life and just tweak them a little bit so that they target different parts of my back a little bit better. Comment down below what your favorite big movement is. By the way, if you're curious if the motion that you want to use is a big movement or like an isolation or finisher, check this video out. That's gonna give you the exact idea of what your movement is. Is it a main movement? Is it a finisher? accessory it pyramids it into a very easy to understand system that you guys can use to just create your own training programs very effectively now mistake number two by far is rep quality i think we all have a picture in our mind of a fella that just yanks around a barbell on a barbell row and uses every muscle in their body other than their back to move the weight that guy is me i made a video where i did that that's a lot of fun and that's exactly why I did it but you're not really targeting any specific muscle of the back when your rep quality is extremely sloppy now that exists on a sliding scale of you know meme cheat row video I command you to row and then 
moving a little bit in your reps and then really strict reps. So it's a sliding scale. You could be on any end of it, but if there's an area of opportunity, it's always something that you can improve. Standardize your form. Now there's a couple ways to go about doing that and a few ways to think about it. For rows and pull downs, it's very simple. Your back is going to be at a specific angle with a row and with a pull down. So you get your gangster lean with your pull downs, you get your back nice and tight on a standing row, and you just simply keep it there. You don't move from that position. Once you start yanking back on a pull down or yanking up on a standing row, it's time for you to just terminate the set. That means not that you haven't sufficiently worked your upper back, it actually means that you work your back very well because it is unable to pull in the position that you have it in. So you've sufficiently worked the upper back on that motion. Now, in terms of just general things that you can think about that'll allow you to feel your back if you really haven't before, sometimes it just comes down to a lot of the things that we write off as bro science. Mind muscle connection and time under tension. You have to allow your muscle to go under tension for you to feel it. Now, am I telling you to be a try hard where you're using a five second eccentric and three second concentric and a giga second squeeze? No, I'm just telling you to command the weights. Now, instead of commanding yourself to row like we talked about in that meme a little bit earlier, you're simply just lowering the bar under control. A nice one Mississippi eccentric where you're allowing the bar to lower feeling that way all the way down and you're doing a nice squeeze at the top. I promise you guys, if you hold yourself to that rep cadence and you haven't felt your back before, provided that you follow the tutorials that we went through before, you will feel your lats, your upper back, your rear delts, whatever the case may be on a back exercise that you just weren't able to before without changing anything else that applies to pull downs, rows, any back exercise. Now, in terms of hip hinges, because the back isn't just lats, and upper back and rear delts and you know those types of muscles it's also your lower back your lower back gives your back a really beefy three-dimensional look if you're having trouble feeling your lower back on hip hinges it's all hammies it's all glutes you just want to make sure that your back is as parallel to the floor as possible now the best way to ensure that you do that is to just maximally stretch your hamstrings we don't stretch our hamstrings as far as we think we are on hip hinges a lot of times. A lot of fellas just bend over. They don't push their hips back, which is what actually allows you to get your back at the maximum angle, get that maximum stretch on your hamstrings. Push your butt back as far as it'll go. What you'll find is your back is gonna be exactly where it needs to be for you to get the maximum lower back stimulus. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it's cold here and I have this basketball jersey on like it's summer. so. We're gonna take a brief intermission inside where I've prepared a whiteboard drawing to talk about our next set of mistakes. I'll see you inside. What's up y'all, we're back inside. We got the Yujiro Hanma drawing. Biggest mistake that I feel like you can make in terms of your exercise selection is the way that you pair your exercises. So peanut butter needs jelly, yin needs yang. Like you, you need something to complement what you're main movement is. So just to give you all an idea of what that means for training, you can't get all of your upper back volume from just bent over rows. You can't. Your lower back fatigue is going to catch up with you. You'll need something to supplement it. And that's kind of the theme with these three pairings. So they complement one another. There's an upper back focused pairing, lats, and then upper back focused pairing, and then one that is just going to, you know, holistically build your back, just like with the second one. Now, with bent over rows and seal rows, that's an upper back focused one. I really like that for pre-exhausting the upper back with the bent over rows, and then also working your lower back as well with the bent over row, and then finishing off the upper back with the seal row. The reason why you just don't do like a bent over row and then like a bent over dumbbell row is that your lower back does not actually need that much volume to grow optimally for most people. I hate that I even use the word optimally, but you know, you know what I mean. Now in terms of a lats and then upper back focused pairing, I really like the neutral pull-ups, like the ones I showed you in that tutorial. And then something like a wide grip pull down. You can even go a wide grip pull up maybe with band assistance to make it a little easier to work in a higher rep range. For this, I'd work with like, you know, between five and eight, and then like, you know, 12 to even upwards of 20 for the wide grip pull down. It's just to really finish off the 
back holistically. Now, the last one is cool. I got this one from Jeffrey uh, in terms of the diagonal pulls, but you can pair any back exercise with a diagonal pull and you're gonna be ensuring that you're holistically working it just because standard form in terms of how most of us do back exercises, especially before we watch this video, is just gonna work a blend of the upper back, the teres major, the lats, and not really target any one of those things preferentially. But the diagonal pull is gonna allow you to really finish off those lats. These are my three favorites. I'm keen to hear, you know, if you guys have any light bulb moments and you have any pairings that you wanna share with me, go ahead and let me know. I'll see y'all back outside. All right, those are my favorite back destruction exercise pairings. I hope that was a light bulb moment, just like with the form tutorials for a lot of you folks. If you got some ideas churning, chime in down below. I'm curious to see what kind of combos y'all came up with. Uh, my fiance made me put on a coat. She said, well, I spent all this money buying this expensive coat for you. You never wear it. So I'll put a coat on. Um, and it's actually pretty warm. So uh, a thank you Gaines Goblin would be nice as well. But we're just gonna talk about our last mistake here. And the last one is the easiest one to fix. It's just not having enough variety to your training program. Now by variety, I just mean variation. So if you do everything else on this list correctly, you go through steps one through three, you're gonna find that your movements will still get stale over time. They're gonna stop progressing. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong other than you just need to rotate your movements around. Most of us know this, but we don't know how to do it, right? So I just wanna show you guys, I brought another whiteboard out here going to show you my go-to variations for just the main movements that we're going to be using here today. Boom, we got the POV change. Now, you don't get a giga drawing. I just made a quick makeup of the, the back anatomy. So you got the upper back, the, the upper traps, the lower back, the jazz, you know, the finesse, the works. In terms of your variations, you just want to make sure you're doing that periodically, right? So every six to eight weeks or so, or however long it takes for a variation to stop progressing. That's reps, weight, or volume, one of the three. I went through some just common big movements that folks use for their back and the direct variations that I prescribe most of the time. So starting with the barbell row, you do a Smith row, or a dumbbell row with the exact bent over posture. Those are my go-tos. Those are what people like the best even. In terms of pull-ups, it's very simple. Just do a chin-up, or you can go to an assisted pull-up in a higher rep range, or you could just go to pull-downs. Now, just like we talked about in that form tutorial and inside, you wanna make sure that you're using the same type of back angle that you're using on your pull-up. You wanna make sure that you're doing that on your pull-downs so that they can have uh, more carryover to one another. Now, if you're a cable row enjoyer, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was a big cable row enjoyer. I enjoy cable rows. Just use a different grip, a different bar that emphasizes a different set of muscles. You'll still work all of them, but it's different enough to the point where you'll now be able to make sure that the movement is fresh when you go back to it. Now, in terms of your hip hinges for the lower back, it's kind of a meme in the powerlifting community. You know, carry over. If it doesn't carry over one to one, it's, you know, useless. But holistically, in terms of muscular development, you can go from a deadlift to a stiff-legged deadlift to a Smith Good Morning to a Smith RDL to a Good Morning with a barbell or a, you know, a safety bar or something like that and still develop the muscles equally to one another. It's just all about variation here. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, your deadlifting volume is going to be very minimal. You're going to go either for stiff leg deadlifts or when it's time to switch from stiff leg deadlifts Lately, I have actually been really loving the good morning. I'm going to make a video following up on my opinion with the good mornings. I was wrong about them. I used to uh, trash the movement. But these are my go-to variations. Just some food for thought for you guys. All right, fellas. That's all she wrote. That's all we got to talk about today. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about, please let me know down below. If you have any comments about any back exercises you're really interested in trying, let me know. I can give you some insight as well. Until then, I'll see y'all as later. Peace.